Hey guys, it's Roy here from rwoco 12 and EpicDroid.com bringing to you today a video on how to root the LG Nexus 5X. The Nexus 5X is an awesome device, I absolutely love it, however, um, the Nexus 5X also has a lot of potential, has a lot of capacity that is not built into the uh, actual device. There are a lot of things that you can unlock and there are a lot of things that you can do with it that are far above and beyond the scope of what Google and LG originally gave us and some of those options are things that we are going to show you how to get to today. So the first thing that you got to do with the LG Nexus 5X is you have to unlock the bootloader. Big disclaimer, please pay attention, it will wipe all your data. Anything that you have on the device that you want to save you will need to back up elsewhere. To unlock the bootloader first you have to boot into the device and you need to unlock developer options. So we're going to go down here. You go into About Phone and you look for the build number. And once you're on the build number, you go ahead and you tap that seven times. And so as you do it, it'll say you're now three steps from being a developer, two steps away, one step away from being a developer, and you are now a developer. I wish it really was that easy. But uh, as you can see here now, right above About Phone, we have Developer Options. We're going to go into Developer Options. Now in developer options, there's two things we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to enable USB debugging. It's going to say, do you allow USB debugging? It's intended for development purposes only, blah, 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 yada, yada. Yes, we understand and we're okay with that. Next, we are going to scroll down. And we are looking for, or maybe it's at the top. Oh, it is at the top. OEM unlocking, sorry. So OEM unlocking, uh, device protection features will not work on this device while this setting is turned on. So we are going to enable this. So we have enabled OEM unlocking. We have also enabled USB debugging. So now we are going to power off the phone. Okay, so now that it is rebooted, we are going to come in here and we are going to hold down the power and the volume button, volume down button, and this will put you into this little start menu. So what this does is you can use your volume keys to go through the different options. So right now we are in the bootloader. There's a recovery mode, a bootloader, and now we're going to plug in our USB cable. So. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that Fastboot has recognized the device. So I'm going to come over here to my command prompt. Oops. And we're going to do Fastboot Devices. And what this does is it'll pop up the serial number of the device and it says that this device is plugged in and it is working. So once we do that, we are going to type in Fastboot. That's F-A-S-T-B-O-O-T -O -O space O-E-M space unlock. Now you're going to come back over to the phone and it says if you unlock the bootloader you will be able to install custom operating software on this phone. A custom OS is not subject to the same testing as the original OS and can cause your phone and installed applications to stop working properly. To prevent unauthorized access to your personal data, unlocking the bootloader will also delete all personal data from your phone, a factory data reset. Press the volume up buttons to select yes or no, then press the power button to continue. So, if you guys are panicking now and you don't want to do this, you can just hit it where it's at, it's on the no, hit the power button and you're done and you don't have to worry about it. For those of you who want to unlock the bootloader, we hit the volume up, and then we hit power, and down here you'll see that it says it's erasing, and over here on the command prompt it just updated, it says finish total time 39.38. 385 seconds. Your bootloader is now unlocked. You will now see that the device state is unlocked. And now we are going to do fast boot reboot. Fast boot reboot, it restarts the phone. Now it's going to start wiping all of our data. Now one time one thing to note is once you've unlocked your bootloader, you will always get that message that says your device's security cannot be verified. That message is there for a reason and it's basically to warn you and to warn Google, uh, any manufacturers or anyone who's working on your phone, that you are running on an unlocked bootloader. Awesome, so the device is now booted and now we're going to go through here. I don't have a SIM card in here, I'm not going to insert one. We don't need to set up Wi-Fi at this point, skip, and... That is so not the right time. Don't want to set up a fingerprint at this point. We are going to skip anyway. And there we go. So now 
If you want to re, uh, reopen the developer options and get access to that again, you would just again come back down, do the same thing we did the last time. And we'll need to enable USB debugging. Um, we, as you can see, the bootloader is currently unlocked, so it does have the OEM unlocking automatically enabled. And now we will unlock the bootloader. I'm, I'm sorry, not the bootloader. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, ADB debugging. <laughs> this is why you should not be doing two things at once. And by two things at once, I mean talking and navigating my device. There you go. USB debugging is now set up, and now we are going to go to the internet, we're going to download a few things, and we are going to root the device. Alright, so now that we've unlocked our bootloader and we have re-enabled USB debugging, we're going to go ahead and go to the next step. The next step is we're going to download TWRP. TWRP is a custom recovery, it's a team win recovery protocol. It is a custom recovery that gives you the ability to make backups, it also gives you the ability to flash custom operating systems, custom vendor images, and it also gives us the ability to do what we call a side load, and we're going to be using that side load here in a little bit. Um, we are also going to be downloading SuperSU. This is the package made by Chainfire that will root your device. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up Google Chrome, and I've already got this loaded here for us in the background. First thing we're going to do is we are going to download SuperSU. You do it by clicking this link here. It says update SuperSU v265 2015 12261450.zip. So you click on that, you download it, and then you're good to go. We are also going to download TWRP for Bullhead. TWRP for Bullhead, we know Team One Recovery Protocol. Uh, Bullhead is the Google code name for the Nexus 5X. Google likes to give all their devices code names and Bullhead just happened to be what the code name for the LG Nexus 5X was. So we're going to download the most up-to-date version. This is TWRP 3.0.2-0. So we're gonna scroll down here. They do have a lot of ads on here and sometimes you will see a lot of ads that say start download. It's in the same color font as the download TWRP link. Just make sure you're clicking the right one. And it's this one right here. So thank you for choosing TWRP. Please click the link below to start your download. Hit that and you're good to go. Now, I've already downloaded those in the background and I have them up here in my downloads folder. Now, one thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is that you put those in a location that is easy to get to. So we're gonna come back over here to our fast boot. One thing I like to do, I'm kind of OCD about it, but I like to save my files to the same file location that I'm running, minimal ADB in fast boot. So I have that here. We're gonna to go to my program files, x86. This may be different for you depending on how your guys' system is set up. I'm gonna go in there and as part of my OCD, I like to keep my devices in separate folders. So I have my NVIDIA shield up there. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm just gonna call this one 5X. And I'm now going to copy and paste those files in here. We're going to paste them. And there we go. So both those files are now in that 5X folder. Okay, so now that we've got those files downloaded, we've put them in that folder. We're going to restart the device to our recover, I'm sorry, to the bootloader. So we're going to power off. Just don't wanna. And once we're powered off, we're gonna hold down the power and volume down. It's gonna take us back here to our bootloader. So just again, we are going to do fast boot devices to make sure that the device is recognized. Okay, the device is there. So now we are going to do fast boot flash recovery space. Now because I'm already in the C drive program files, x86 minimal ADB and fast boot that it is on my system, I can go ahead and I can just start writing the folder name. So 5x backslash and then we're going to do the names of the files that we're flashing. So I'm gonna move this down here so I can get the right name there. So the name of the file is TWRP-3.0.2-0.2. Bullhead.img. 
Now again, the command is the same, the file path may be a little bit different, so please make sure that you get that file path and enter it exactly as it should be. You also want to make sure that the file name is entered exactly the way that it is down here. If it is not, then it could cause issues with the flash. As we just saw here, I apparently hit something wrong. So, twrp-3.0.2-0. Oh, I did dot .o. So, that is something we want to watch out for. So, dash zero bullet. Okay, there we go. That one went this time. So, now that we've successfully flashed recovery, we're going to come down here. We're going to use our volume down, and we're going to select recovery mode. And then hit power, and this will boot us to our recovery. And congratulations, Team Win Recovery Project is working. Swipe to allow modifications. This is asking if you want to keep the system as read-only. We do not want to keep the system as read-only because we need to be able to modify the data and be able to work with it. So we are going to swipe to allow modifications. And now we are going to go into advanced. And we're going to do ADB side load. And we are now going to swipe to start side load. We're going to come in here and we're going to do the command adb sideload update dash super su dash v dot two dot six five dash two thousand fifteen twelve twenty six one four one five five zero dot zip. Now again, this is one of those things you want to make sure is correct. But now that we've got that, it is side loading. You can see here it's doing super SU installer, mounting system, data, root FS, extracting files, detecting system compatibility, systemless mode, yada, yada, yada. And it tells you over here, says total transfer took 1.61x. I'm guessing that's seconds. It seemed like it took longer than that. But then here it says important notices if TWRP offers to install SuperSU, do not in all caps let it. First reboot may take a few minutes. It can also loop a few times. Do not interrupt the process. So reboot system. And Android is starting. Swipe to unlock. Let's go into our menus. And congratulations, SuperSU is installed. We're going to open it, follow me, I already follow him, so I'm going to hit no thanks, and congratulations, you are rooted. So if this video has been helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to share this video with your friends and family, neighbors, and whoever the heck else you want to share it with. And as always, thank you for watching and have an awesome day.